I guess it's a good time to get back into the Michael Hampton method and um, what we did before uh, we went through our gesture drawings our landmarks and our forms and connections now we're going to get into the head drawing and uh, this book was designed to um, do these things in order because um, this is the way he's laid it out. So everything that we're doing now is a special order that when we get to the um, the end, it should all, all fall into place. So um, today we're going to be going into the head drawing and all that um, comes into it. Um, this is like the best part. It's like a really popular um, subject as far as art is the head. People love drawing heads, so... Uh, let's get into it. So I'm going to be getting into uh, page 56. <clears throat> and here he's got some drawings of examples of the process of drawing heads. Um, and he says this uh, process, um, you should um, thoroughly study the skull, something you shouldn't skimp on. Um, so uh, today we're going to be going into step one is the sphere, the tilt, and adding the jaw. So let's, uh, let's get into that. So we have our sphere, which is a circle. All right, so um, we have our sphere. It's basically that. Let's do, let's do three of them. Kind of eyeball it. That's our spheres. And the sphere is two thirds of the skull, the entire skull. The one thing you might not know is that our eyes are right in the middle of our head. Really couldn't, can't tell, but uh, our eyes are right in the middle of our head. So um, we have our spheres, um, and the process is repeated throughout the remainder of the book to emphasize a consistent understanding of the fundamentals. And then we have our tilt, which is a straight line drawn through the center of the sphere. So we have uh, straight on, we have our tilt, and the horizontal, which is the head lying down and flat. I think I didn't, I didn't get that too straight. So it should be down here. Okay. So those are the, the three tilts. And now step three will be adding the jaw. The tilt, uh, we'll add the jaw here. Um, I'm not sure why he doesn't go into the tilt here. But first we'll go here, um, and then we'll throw in our, our eyes, and then um, our jaw. So we have our, our, our T or our cross. So this is our T. So then this will be our nose. But the T helps the position. Finding the T is extremely important, not only for correct placement, but also solid organization of the figures. First, we, we should be focused only using the jaw. Um, so, you know, we, we could draw our jaw, which would be kind of like this. It's kind of going like this. I um, mean, it's got like two planes coming in like this. Um, He's got ears, I'll put some ears. So that's the center line. Now let's let's go ahead and, and use these tilts that he's got on here. Let's just figure this out. So this would be this, and then this would be this. And then um 
That would be our nose. And then this would be our jaw. Um, go ahead and draw that. That would be our jaw. Um, something like that. I think it looks too much. So right around there, I guess. That would be that tilt. And then this would be um, the tilt, but this, I, I'm not sure, man. I'm kind of confused here. Um, your eraser. Be that um he's gonna draw our ear. But when he's talking about the last drawing, the horizontal line th goes through, it shows the head that is lying down or flat. This step is important in developing the positioning of the head. Now I'm trying to figure this out. So is he saying like um the head this would be our profile right here. And this would be where our eye was, eyes would be, so the center line. Um, and then this would be um, our jaw. And then um, this would be where our nose would go. In our ear. I'm thinking that's what he's talking about. I don't know. I'll leave a comment. Let me know what you think. Okay, so then um, he's got he's got these. We got this here, which is straight up a T or a cross, and that's our block. That's our straight up straight up look and then I'm on page 59 um, it says note when the face changes position the T favors one side of the face for example as the head turns to the right the center of the T starts to favor the right side of the face when the face is seen in profile the T is lost um, so this is basically um, the third one except turned. So it would be this, and then um, this is the basic, sh basic shape, but it's just turned. That's the third one. Um, but let's do, um, this one is pretty much the tilt, except it's going this way. If I might be wrong. So the box is kind of going this way. I could be wrong. I don't think that's right, but you get the idea. Um, Yeah. Okay. So I don't know if that makes sense. <coughs> Let's go to the next page. And so now we're drawing in perspective. Um, go ahead and erase this. All right, let's start a new, a new page here. Okay, this step introduces perspective into your drawing. Everything should be organized and use the shape arrangement placement of the forms. Um, the first step is deciding a perspective is to simply determine you are underneath A or above B. 
A shows the head, what it looks like from underneath, and note the T change. To the right, note the perspective is simplified by the cylinder. When wrapping the T across the cranial mass, always draw through around the sphere. And so we're going more by the eye level as far as our, our um, finding our perspective. So basically, it's got, it's got two cylinders. It's got a cylinder here, cylinder here. Basically, this is underneath, and this is above. Okay, two cylinders. And this cylinder, we'll go ahead and draw our sphere, our T. Now our T is going to wrap around, wrap around like that. And then it's got like dotted lines to show you. You know, we're kind of looking, looking at that from above. And then um, it's got eyebrows in here. Um, and then we got our jaw. And we'll just place our jaw like this, thusly. Got our ear. So basically, um, we're looking at this from underneath. Uh, and our eyebrows. Like this. Um, so he's got our sphere, and then he's dividing it in half, and this is where our eyebrows would be, this is where our ear would be. So we're starting with our sphere, and then we're um, cutting it in half, and let's do the one on the top, um, sphere, and then we're going underneath, and then it's our um, imaginary um, slice, and then we got our center line, our T, and then our eyebrows. And on our jaw, like this, right here. And he's got um, sphere. Um, he's got this center line. Hold on, I'm not sure what this line is. This arrow going this way and this way. Oh. It's not exactly centered. But it's got the eyebrows. It's like extreme. Extreme. And it's got like sliced through here. Don't really understand that. Okay, so 61. Um, some five minute skulls. See if you can analyze them for the first four steps discussed so far. Start finding the cranial mass. Okay, let's let's try that. Um, so um it's got um let's do this one. So he's got this one. We're looking downward. So we do our mass, eyebrows, and then our jawline. And then this would be like this slice. Now here's this straight on. Um, here is um, 
this one is looking upwards. So this one is like that. So there's our, our um, sphere, and then there's our uh, eyebrow, and then there's our slice right there. But um, just, uh, just practice that. Right, let's go to the next one. Proportions. So you've got the proportions here in um, basic proportions. Uh, the placement of, of the face. Now, one thing cool here is that the keystone. Like, I don't know if we know what a keystone is, but a keystone is um, something that holds like a bridge together. So, um, like, there's the bridge, and you got like, um, there's the bridge. Like, you go under, and then you got your, you got your bricks with the bridge. I don't know if I'm doing this right. But then you have this thing called the keystone, which um, holds the bridge together on both sides. That's our keystone right there. And it's cool because he has this thing called the keystone. I guess we have the thing, this keystone right here. So let's, uh, let's put together a, a face and see if we can get these proportions together. Um, Okay, so we got our sphere. Okay, we got our um, our T. So our T would be like right there. Um, it's just like a straight on. So this would be our slice right here, and then our our jaw and then our ear. I think it goes back a little more here. Like that. Okay. So, um, it's kind of like the Bern Hogarth um, thing going on here. So, um, I'll go ahead and slice. This is uh, the, the, the Andrew Loomis slice here. Got a slice there. I'm going to shade that a little bit. There's our slice. Um, so we have our hairline. And then um, we're going to start with the brow. So there's our brow. And then um, there's our hairline. It's got this arrow here. I don't know what the arrow means. It's like center line. I don't know what that means. Um, so the brown and the keystone. So, so um, the keystone is half. There is our keystone right there. The keystone is half. The bottom of the socket is half. So we just just we just um distinguish that this is a, this is a half right here. So this, I'm gonna get a ruler here. So the first, the first um, three proportions are one half. So we determined that this is one half. So we're gonna eyeball it. There's a half, 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 half. Okay. And then you have thirds, which would be. Well, let's let's go ahead and do the halves first. So the eye socket, the socket would be half. So that's our socket. And then the bottom of the socket. So the bottom of the socket is half, the top of the socket, and then um, so the, the top of the keystone should be the top of the socket, and then we have the bottom of the socket. So these are two halves here. So, so those are two halves. And then the base of the nose. So the base of the nose, anyway, I'm just going to draw the base of the nose. The base of the nose kind of looks like it's right there. Oh, 
Or maybe I'm wrong. Oh. Paste the news. And then this comes out. Um, separation of the lips. So he's got do our burn burn Hogarth like ball here. Do our chin. Um, uh, we got our lips, which is a third. So I guess this would be like a third, and then the top of the chin, the bottom of the chin. All right. So I hope that makes sense. Kind of John always got here. I don't think we're getting into this yet. This part. Uh, your cheek. Uh, got her ear. This is kind of like the Andrew Lemus deal here. Uh, he's got all the eyeballs here. Got this going in this direction, kind of like a, kind of like um, Bern Hogarth. But um, so that is our um, proportions. So you have half, half, half half, one-third, one-third. I just see that. Um, and then he's got um, finding the proportions based on pronounced areas of the bone and skull. Begin with these measurements by finding the brow line and the bottom of the jaw. So If we were going to draw the skull, you know, be like a, kind of like that. But this is, I mean, I'm really, I'm really liking this. This is really cool. Anyway, um, so those are proportions. On page 63, he's got all the explanations to what I just said. I should have just looked over there and saw it, but, um, you know, he's got some cool drawings here. Um, what's next? Um, the side plane. Uh, the step begins with finding the hairline, the drawing, and perspective all the way around to the back, back of the skull. So it's basically what we just did here. Let's do just a quick... Quick one, quick one, uh, quick study here. So we got, again, our sphere, our T, our slice, and our jaw. Um, so um, step begins with finding the hairline and drawing in, in perspective all the way around the back of the skull. So this is our hairline. Hold on. Uh, let's go ahead and slice this. Um, um, so we start with our hairline. So our hairline starts right there. There's our hairline. Next, beginning from the base of the nose, draw another line back across the form to the back of the skull. The base of the nose. Um, so the base of the nose be like right here. Uh, now between the back of the skull, the top line from the hairline, the outside of the brow, 
a line drawn from the base of the nose, draw an ellipse to represent the side plane score. I already did this. So basically, I just jump, I jumped the gun here. So basically, you're going to be drawing your um, side plane, which is your slice right there. However, the orientation and the size of the lips will change depending on perspective. Yeah, so, so that's our side plane. All right. Um, this is the most important stage, is giving the head 3D appearance. It's a very simple way. The box um, describes what is beginning to take place in the skull. Between the four points mentioned, Okay, uh, draw two straight lines connecting them. We have our brow, which is right here. And then um, we've got this divided here. Here. Our nose, our mouth, and the top of our chin. All right. Nobody messed that up too much. Go on to the next page. Uh, this, this step begins by placing near the ear sits in the lower quarter created by the drawing horizontal divisions. So right the um, the ear, if we draw our lines here, the ear should go like right there. That is our ear. It's shown in black, um, back of our skull, and then this is where our, our chin starts. Um, note this process built. Uh, uh, the second part of the step is to find the line of the cheek. So this is the line of the cheek right here. Um, The green shape below, the line of the cheekbone begins at the top of the ear and continues down as a C curve. So the line of the cheek starts at the top, which is way down to here. Um, right there. That's our cheek. Um, Note that this process builds from early line work to is no longer emphasized. Okay, uh, these drawings represent the ear from a number of angles. Keep these drawings as simple as possible. These diagrams here. Um, let's draw some ears. All right, so let's draw. Let's see a line to give us some kind of uh, uh, proportion and um, consistency. All right, so A, A, B, and C to the right show that represents the ear from simple side, three quarter view in the back. So the simple side is basically something like that. Um, three quarter view is kind of like this. Like a question mark. It's got like get it, it's got a cut here, and then he's got the sides basically like that. Um. So if I was drawing a straight on head, we got our sphere. We got our T. Got a line, or jaw, I mean. Um, our ears would look like this, kind of like at an angle. And they're connected like so. But it's got a bunch of different ears, um, drawings from different sides and perspectives. Um, you know, um, here's like one, 
This is like the back of an ear. I see this a lot in comics. I've always picked this up from guys like Neil Adams. You know, and then, you know, the you would have like the, you know, your, your ear and your eye. I don't know if it's lined up correctly. Um, but then you have, um, you know, like I explained in the Loomis and the um, um, Bridgman and stuff, um, I do... I used to draw ears, I used to draw ears like that, like a very cartoonish, I would pick that up from a cartoon, and then you have the, this like thing right here, but look at your own ears, um, I, um, but when you go in, you have, um, you have this, this shape here, I guess to help cover your ear, I guess God designed these so if we needed to, you know, cover our ears from loud noises we just push that part in and it fits like a puzzle piece right there um and then um we have this thing right here it's like a y that goes around and then there's an indent like thus um and then we have like um the like the lip goes around um but he's got like different ears that you know, you can look at and, and copy, but also look at other people's ears, you know. Um, that's always good, a good step. Right, let's come to the next part. Um, the keystone begins by finding the recessive plane, the eye sockets. Um, it's important to show the plane and sockets. Uh, having established a plane. Again, our keystone like I talked about the bridge, there's our bridge, there's the keystone to get, to keep that bridge together. This right here is our, our keystone. So our keystone is right there. Um, step begins by finding recessive planes of the eye sockets shown with the orange dots. So um see it's their center line so orange dots are we doing a red here um important to show that the plane of the sockets pushes into the skull at an angle also note that all four dots are connected to show one plane begins in the brow ends the proportion line for the bottom sockets the plane does not go past the cutout for the side of the plane of the head um, having established plane of the sockets, the structure of the nose can be built. So, um, here's our keystone. And then we can go ahead and build our nose into these, um, shapes here, like this. Uh, yeah. Um, and then we can build out. We, okay, so we established tip of the nose. Um, the tip of the nose on either end, two lines, um, you know, drawn to connect the base, which would be on the plane, which represents the bottom plane of the nose. So we have our bottom plane of the nose here. Um, Right here. Um, and um, the next step is to draw the straight lines from the tip of the nose. Pink dots again to, to the orange dots. I don't know, man. That's, I don't see any pink dots or orange dots. I see purple dots. I see orange dots uh, but anyway the the keystone is is this part right here remember it's like a bridge and then that's when you draw your keystone um that's when you build out your nose through those through that and then this is where the brow starts you get your eye sockets yeah 
And then the next page shows uh, noses, um, basic shapes of the nose. Um, so, um, you know, there's a shape for a nose. Um, and here's a shape. news uh, and there's some different ones but let's let's play with these two right here um, so then you just kind of draw around the news uh, you got your nostril nostril there and um, just look at noses you know um, like this plane here. Uh, another thing too with noses is if I draw a highlight, it really brings it out. Look at that. Let's draw this one. Um, so this news, we have this this part here, the top part goes around like that, and then we have our nostrils. Then we have the bottom plane here, which goes around. So there's just, just a couple examples of noses. Um, gonna bring it out. Um, examples of news is um, but um, very it very easy so it's been broken up into the septum and nostrils I guess the septum is here and this is your nostrils <clears throat> so it all that all connects to the keystone so this is our our keystone right there it all connects to the keystone. So the keystone um, begins there. We have our sockets. Our keystone. And our sockets. So just remember, keystone is, is that thing, the bridge that holds the bridge together. And then we get into eyes. Um, So eyes um, talks about, uh, this page contains examples of eyes, placements and planes. When drawing the eye, always begin by describing the sphere of the eye and where it sits within the socket. It's most important to give the eye its context before going right in for the highlight. When describing the eyelids, be sure to think of them as wrapping lines. The lids should feel as if they travel across the underlying of the eye. Notice uh, how the eyelids are asymmetrical, exactly like the gesture lines. Um, in chapter one, the upper lid will always have a higher curve closer towards the nose, and the lower lid will drop the curve further from the nose. So he's talking about asymmetrical lines. So when drawing the eye, we begin by striving the, the sphere. So let's draw some eyes here. Um, so, so we have their sphere. So he's talking about um, our, our wrapping lines. Remember we had our wrapping lines, or our wrapping lines went on our figure drawing. Um, so here he's kind of talking like the eye should have um, a wrapping line and our eyelid, the eyelid should be like a wrapping line. So I guess it would be like kind of like that. And then um, the eyelids, is asymmetrical. Um, kind of, kind of lost there, but um, but we have our um, we have our pupil, and then we have our um, tear duct, and then we have um, our our um, 
um, there's a sagging underneath. Everybody has it um, that I learned from Bern, Bern Hogarth. There's like um, the eye rests in the socket, so it creates this like lip right there. Everybody has one. You know, when you draw on it, oh, it's gonna look old, but no, it's, it's just a natural thing. Um, um, but he really doesn't go into detail about the eyes. So um, it takes a lot of practice. It took me a lot of practice to learn eyes and to get them right. And I would study other artists. Um, another thing too with the eyes is, is like an eye is round. So there's gonna be um, like um, a roundness to the eyes. Like, so like, it's like, this would be our eye. Okay. Um, so it would be something like this. You would have, um, if this was like a ball, you know, it, 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 the sh it comes out, you got um, a light and then it comes back around kind of like this. You know. So you got, and that's the way an eye socket should be. And then you can draw, you know, your, your, your pupil, you know, and that's, that's the way an eye should, should, should look. <coughs> I just got a bunch of examples here, but, um, it's not really explained in detail. Just, um, look at, um, other artists and um, see how they draw eyes. Because like I said, it took me a really long time to get realistic eyes. It re it's really hard because a lot of people, you know, they draw like the football and the eye and you know, it's a symbol of an eye, but it's not an eye. Uh, so, so yeah, it's, uh, it, it takes practice to do eyes. Um, I'm not sure what he means by the eyelids are asymmetrical. Um, but, <clears throat> and then you have like, um, there's a, a thing of like, uh, I don't know what, how to call it, what to call it. It's like, it's like a slice underneath this eye. And then <clears throat> like that. Uh, and then you have like your eye your um eyelashes. Um our denture sphere. Um I'm gonna use these two to demonstrate the, the the denture sphere. So I'm gonna go ahead and kind of fix these up. I'm gonna fix this up a little so I'm gonna put this around. So I think we're looking up on this one. Um, the step involves uh, developing the area of the tooth cylinder and denture sphere, the above, or the area of the bone, which includes the teeth, pushes out in the way of the face. The main characteristic of the lower portion of the face is developed before drawing lips. The denture sphere is an oval. The oval is drawn from the top of the chin up to underneath the area of the nose. So, the top of the chin, this is our top, this is the top of her chin to underneath the nose. So this is our, uh, that's our nose. That's our denture sphere. Um, 
The lips, which are drawn on top of the form, always occupy the same perspective. Note the difference between the drawing of the lips from seen beneath and from above. Simplify. Think of the lips as an M above a W. However, unlike example, never have placed the M and the W in a straight line. The M, the upper lip, and the W of the O should be drawn around the perspective. So he's got um, um, so the top of the lip is like an M and the lower lip is a W, which makes sense. You know, and then you have, you know, your, uh, your, um, the, the meat of the lips. So he's saying always draw it in perspective. So, so that's our, our mouth. And then you draw a W or an M and then a W going around the form our denture sphere. Um, let's do this one. So we have our keystone, our nose. Okay, you got our bottom, top of the chin, our sphere. M, W. Okay. All right. Um. Moving on. Oh, the lips, okay, okay. Um, yeah, so that's, that's basically it. It's just like a, an M and a W, and then draw, when you draw your sphere, draw it in a perspective, and then draw your M and then your W. And then um, on this page, he's just got examples of um, the sphere and the lips, um, the nose, and just examples of um, of drawings uh, to stimulate the imagination, to stimulate your artistic juices. Okay, complete a line drawing. This is an example of how your work, how you complete a line, what should look. Before moving into any finishing work of the character head, make sure this uh, development, okay. Uh, these forms are what give your drawings feeling and believability. The development of the feature should, at this beginning stage, be, should be a concern. So just he's just basically saying the things that um, we've looked at should be um, applied to the drawing. And he's got like a bunch of, of like really intricate things going on here. Um, but again, he's got like shadows and stuff here that we don't talk about, uh, profile. All right, let's get into the profile. Uh, developing a profile can, developing a profile view can be handled with a slightly different set of tools. Uh, the first steps, however, should be the same. It's still important to establish the shape, tilt, perspective, and doing this your drawing look. Should look like example B, C, straight on. Demonstrating the feeling of volume by cheating and exaggerating perspective point in this. In the case of C or E, after finishing step, the use of proportions and profile should be introduced. Uh, try likening your character's profile by thinking of how much the forms the face project out of the front line F. So it's feeling naturalism in the profile is achieved with the idea of the gesture. Uh, notice that the forms of the face are in a balancing act to alternating between the form projecting out and form receding in. For example, the forehead pushes out, the eye sockets recede, the other pushes forward, etc. Keep the pattern in mind. Uh, notice the shape of the back of the ears. Okay, uh, when drawing the profile and perspective, emphasize the bottom top or bottom of the head to achieve the same profile. All right, let's try this. Um, so, um, 
draw our sphere. Okay, and then our, our center line and our T, but since we're doing a um, profile, the cross would start there. Um, and you would have, uh, you got, this, got the chin simplified um, at the ear. I got the head, uh, chin coming out like that. Okay. Um, so again, it's, it's the balancing act of, um, we go with it. You have our brow, we have our hairline. We have our brow, we have our keystone, uh, the bottom of the socket, the nose, the lips, chin. Mm. Um, so this is like a straight on view. So our nose, keystone, eye socket. Our, our denture sphere, bottom and chin. Um, and then he has it in different um, perspectives. Uh, so he's got one, which is going underneath. Let's try that. Got our sphere. And this is our, our slice. Um, and then we have our T, that's our T. Um, we have our jaw and then we have our neck here. But it's going, or, okay, hold on, so I'm jumping ahead. So we have um, our hairline. Um, more um, so we have our keystone um, sockets nose uh, um, denture sphere chin uh, find our ear goes around here um, but it's going underneath so we're seeing the underneath of our nose. Uh, like kind of like that. Underneath the chin. Like thus, thus, you know. Um, and then we can do our top view. On top view, this see the top of the cylinder. Uh, we draw our sphere. Um, we'll draw our um, brow line. We'll go ahead and slice it just to get for our perspective going. Um, we'll do our T. Um, do our our chin, our neck. And again, he talks about um, uh, achieved by gesture. Um, so this is the bottom. So we're looking, we're looking down. Like here, we're looking up. Here, we're looking down. So we're the nose. So this is our. Here's our keystone. Our eyes, nose mouth, chin. So we're looking downward. Kind of get the illusion that we're looking downward. Um, so I hope that makes sense. And then it goes back into the ears. 
And then he's got um, different shots of, um, of what we went over. Again, we start with our sphere, slice, our T, our, um, our jaw, and then we go in with our keystone, push things out, things go out, go in, we got our denture sphere, and just from different, different angles, you know. Um, now we go into the back of the head. Um, similar profile, the back of the head offers a unique set of problems. Um, however, you always begin with the four major steps, having set the placement design. The back of the head is predominantly structured with the T on the T overlap. The forms you're looking to overlap in this position are the trapezius, the form of the neck, the sternocleidomastoid, uh, cranial mass, three, and the ear. So we start um, with our sphere. And then um, the T overlap. Where where is the T overlap? On the T overlap, the forms you're looking to overlap are the trapezius one. So I guess that's, this is the trapezius. Um, Form of the neck two. So this uh, the cranial mass. Oh, this is the trapezius right here. The trapezius is this right here. That's our trapezius. And then um, the form of the neck two, sterno. Cleidomastoid three. Uh, and then the cranial mass four. That's our cranial mass, which is our sphere. Um, and then our ear, which are these, these shapes right here. I hope that makes sense. You're kind of, kind of a little confused with the names and the um, the uh, explanation, but it's it's kind of cool. Let me go in with some some tone, kind of make it look three D. Yeah. All right. The back of the head. Um. So then he's got um, the following examples of how to illustrate simple jobs with lighting um, on tonal paper. I mean, we could do that, but I want to skip this step. Um, maybe I'll do it in a separate video. But um, having the basic forms as foundational form of the head will make it difficult to invent any figures. Um, So he's saying um, the process delays gratification through first focusing first on the inside and then increased understanding of the depiction of the outside. But here are just some, some cool, cool tonal drawings. And then um, these are notes from the classroom lecture from different um, processes uh, indicated. Uh, Indicate it for the neck muscles, um, uh, alleviator. Okay, he's got a bunch of stuff here. Organization of the face, uh, how that works. So, again, you know, just just go in. It's basically covering everything that we just went over, but into a, um, a finished form. So 
let's I guess we can um um finish the video um creating what we've learned into a finished piece. So let's do that. Um and then like here he's got a bunch of stuff. I don't want to skip this because I feel like it's important, but maybe we'll be going over since we're just going over the face, he's got like a lot of the neck muscles. I'm not sure. I'm sure we'll be going over that in a later chapter, but um, let's um, let's do a just a finished piece. Like we, let's do something right here, and to figure out, um, let's go over everything we just did. Okay, so um, go ahead with our sphere. Um, and then, um, our T and then we establish our T, go and slice that just so we're looking down, we're looking, oh, I can't see that, uh, we're looking down, um, And then we draw our, our draw our line our jaw. Um, he's got our neck here. We really didn't go over the neck, but um, um, so then we establish our proportions, which would be. Um, was it half, 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 third, third? Um, so we start with um, our keystone. Keystone, I like that. Um, remember our keystone. Um, Is that bridge? Yeah, I can't see it. Okay, so our keystone. And then I'm going to um, measure half, 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 third, third. Okay. Um, And then, um, from the keystone, I'll develop my nose. So here he's got like the skull. He's doing like a skeleton. So I'm developing my nose. I've got my eye sockets. I've got my eyes. Um, my cheek, I got my um, my denture um, denture sphere, and then you got the bottom of the top of the cheek and the bottom of the cheek, and then um, from here, um, draw our ear, just like our slice here. That'll be my ear. Um, my neck. We haven't really gone over the neck yet. But this is looking down. We've got our, our hairline. And then... Um, so he's got... Um, let, me, let me lighten this up a little bit here. He's got like the skull. Um, we got our denture sphere. Uh, yeah. 
Then he's got um, he's got some stuff going on here. It's like doing some, some, something like this here. I don't know what that is. I guess it's like the the, the, the jawline. Um. So that's the first part. Um, and then he's got, um, he's got something going on with his brow. Don't know what this is. Um, uh, so then he's starting um with the news again we're looking down so there's our news and then remember our lips go in perspective we got our m and then our w and then, and then he just goes in and starts um drawing and we draw our eyes um, fix our nose and you know, it's going into like shadows and just um, creating form adding hair and stuff um, Creating like shadows, just forms and shadows. So, um, trying to make sense of everything. I hope I'm making sense to you. Um, I'm trying, trying to screw this up, but I'm having a lot of fun with it. And um, yeah. <sighs> trying to make sense of it. Anyway, so that is the head. And next we'll get into anatomy. But, you know, how about I helped you um, understand um, the drawing of the head. And, um, you know, if you, if you like what you see, please consider subscribing. Um, because it helps a guy like me um, grow on YouTube. And, um, you know, it's, it's hard to, you know, mix faith with art. Because there's so many people who don't agree with agree with me as far as um, my faith is concerned, but, you know, peace of the Lord, Jesus Christ be with you all, and, and, uh, and I thank you for watching, and, and I hope you find, you know, some kind of peace through this video and some kind of understanding of the beauty of art, the beauty of Michael Hampton's art, and, uh, and, just, and just loving and appreciating um, what he's doing. And So again, I thank you for watching, and we'll see you again.